Welcome to One on One with Wild Lascos. In this brief podcast, you'll learn how to most effectively address senior financial exploitation. Now, here's Walt. Greetings, everyone. Having worked as a PR and communications professional within the credit union industry from coast to coast for more than 20 years now, I still believe, as ever before, that the role of public relations is still not fully understood nor appreciated within our industry. The majority of times, the focus continues to be fixated on marketing initiatives and advertising campaigns, whereas any effort to enhance the reputation of the credit union within the local community remains restricted to charitable support, volunteer engagement, news releases, and check presentations – seems to me that credit un- unions are missing many golden opportunities by holding on to this misconception with its faulty understanding of public relations and the many ways it can contribute to the overall health and success of the organization's balance sheet. To help us come to a fuller understanding of public relations and how a well-planned PR strategy can boost not only a greater awareness of the value the credit union brings to the local community, but also how it can further strengthen its balance sheet performance, I'm thrilled to have Jeff Pizzino, APR, the Chief Authentic Officer of Authenticity PR, as my guest today. As a wizard of words professionally for more than 35 years, Jeff has helped businesses transform their public relations and marketing communications into attention-getting, engaging, and persuasive messages with a focus on telling the why of a story with clarity, impact, and authenticity, he gives his clients a competitive advantage by taking their communications and promotions from noise to noticeable. Jeff has an MBA in management from Western International University and a Bachelor of Arts degree in communications with an emphasis in PR from Brigham Young University. Jeff, let's begin by having you provide a brief overview of your background and services as a public relations professional. I'd be happy to do that, Walt. Uh, First of all, thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to share some PR insight with your listeners. Let me start by first giving a shout out to my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, apologize for any uh, possible nasal intonations you may hear from my native upbringing, but I've lost most of my most of my accent. So we should be okay there. So I decided to make <laughs> to make communications my major with an emphasis in PR, as you mentioned, because of the Career Counseling Center at BYU. I went there and took all these tests, and they found that my strength, my interests, were in creativity and writing. So they said, why don't you try PR? I said, okay. And so here I am, some 35 years later, still working the very same thing I studied at BYU in my undergrad. So so I always joke that either I, I guessed my major right or I just don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> so I started my career in 87 working for the seventh largest PR agency in the world, Catch and Public Relations. So after leaving there, I, I've worked for a Fortune 100 company, a nonprofit, an Inc. 5000 fastest growing company, and several startups. But I've owned my own business for the majority of my 35-year PR career. So regarding some services that we offer, as you mentioned, you know, we help companies and organizations tell their story with clarity, impact, and authenticity. We believe that when organizations harness the power of story in all their communications, press releases, website copy, marketing collateral, uh, whether they're at trade shows, whatever it might be, their communications will be more attention-getting, engaging, and persuasive when they utilize story. There you go. And and Jeff, I have to say, you know, my wife is also a veteran of the large uh, PR agencies, and, and you spend time there as well. Uh, the way I look at it, that when you work at a, one of those large PR agencies, you really pay the dues. You learn. You guys really are the, the veterans and the authorities of the subject matter when it comes to uh, public relations, uh, marketing, and communications. So, with, with that in mind, within the credit union industry, I find that nine times out of ten, we'll see a manager or a director of, or a VP of marketing. Uh, very rarely 
do we see an executive bearing the title of vice president of public relations? So help us all to understand, what is the sure. distinction? What exactly is public relations and how does it differ from the discipline of marketing? Well, let me start by saying, first of all, after we moved to Johnson City, Tennessee in 2019, we became a credit union customer. Uh, we looked at all the different options we had there for financial institutions and found that credit unions, to me, they, they seemed more customer friendly than banks. So I'm a fan of credit unions. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's good to hear. And I'm sure our listeners love it as well. <laughs> and I'm not just saying, I really believe that. So so the thing about public relations is that so many people do not understand what PR is. It's so bad that sometimes clients will ask me to write a PR, thinking that PR stands for press release. Now, that, that just is the worst thing in the world to, for a PR person to hear. It's like nails on a chalkboard. PR always stands for public relations, not press release. And that's why... People think of PR so often as only dealing with press coverage. They'll say things like, or they used to say things like, get me on Oprah back when she was still on the air, (laughs) thinking that's all it did. But Mm -hmm. but it's so much more. So, Walt, if I can just take a second, let's just define what marketing is and what PR is. So marketing and advertising, based on building brand awareness. Marketing sells a product or service through pricing, distribution, and promotion. It's also known as the four P's, product, price, promotion, and placement. Of course, placement taking the place of distribution. So some marketers say that the fifth P should be public relations, but I say no, it shouldn't be, but they should use it though. Uh, So marketing is more of a push strategy. You're just pushing your message out there. Now, public relations, on the other hand, uh, a common definition is that It's establishing mutually beneficial two-way relationships between an organization and its stakeholders. So PR is more of a pull, push, and pull strategy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I I like the way you you define that and you make that distinction. Very, very interesting. You know, uh, Jeff, I've been um, engaged in communications and PR for some 40 years now. And all along the way, there has been continuous debate vis-a-vis the relationship between PR and marketing. Does one supersede the other? What's your, what's your guidance on this? Okay, this is, this is the question in the PR marketing world. Uh, I have a really good friend who works in marketing, uh, he, and um, we've had this debate, like where does PR belong? In the last three companies I worked in, when I actually had, quote-unquote, a real job, so I wasn't self-employed, <laughs> They had public relations under the marketing umbrella, and that just drove me crazy. And here's why. When you put PR under under the marketing umbrella, you limit the effectiveness of it in your organization. So so Joel and I, uh, we talked about this over the years, and he's like, yeah, PR is a marketing function. Well, not really. I mean, it, it, it works with marketing. And what's funny is that now he owns his own business. He sells uh, this, uh, this uh, meal replacement shake at, at Health Code. And um, he goes to me the other day, Jeff, you know, now that I own my own business, I, I, I'm beginning to see how PR is different than marketing. It should be a separate function. So you want PR and marketing to be on the same level. And both of them should have a direct report to the CEO. One should not be above the other in an organization. But at the same time, they need to work hand in hand. And there's many reasons for that that I can get into if you would, mm-hmm. if you would like me to. It, you know, please, please share with us. Okay. So the idea is that when you think of public relations, you should really think of it as corporate communications because it should act as a conscience of a company. Now, I say that, that's a lot more than just doing press relations. It's looking out for the reputation of of the organization so that no matter what a company is doing, whatever it's communicating, 
it needs to fall in line with the values of the company and whatever is being said or done should be keeping the company safe. So when PR, the head of PR or corporate communication is acting as a conscious of the company, that person is keeping an eye out for everything that is being said or done by the company. So in other words, how the company markets, what they say in their marketing, their advertising, what the salespeople are saying, what human resources may, is maybe saying uh, in, in, their, in recruiting employees, uh, what the CEO is saying to uh, internally to the staff, all of that should be overlooked by, overseen by the, uh, the head of PR at a company, making sure that everything that is being said is, like I said, keeping the company safe, making sure it's adhering to their values, and uh, that helps with the overall reputation of, of the company. Mm-hmm. So a marketing person isn't necessarily going to be thinking about uh, how will a certain uh, stakeholder be affected by this marketing campaign? Uh, you know, how will we be perceived in the community after we do this particular campaign? And that's up to the, the PR person who should have a seat at the table to speak up at that point and say, hey, you know, we may want to look at this campaign in this, in this way because it may affect this stakeholder in such and such, such and such way. So maybe we want to tweak the messaging a little bit, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's, that's kind of the idea is to have that, that oversight of, of the, all of the communications at an organization. You know, if, if I may, Jeff, uh, maybe something that could be of uh, an analogy here. Uh, back in the day, I worked at Siena College in upstate New York, and I worked in the uh, financial, or I should say the development office, institutional advancement office. And I remember the, uh, the executive in charge of uh, development for the organization when, when we were going to do a capital campaign. The f- primary focus to kick off that campaign was always looking and communicating the values of the institution, the successes, um, all the good things that that organization is doing in the community, uh, its achievements for the students, its contributions. And then once all that foundation was laid, then it got into the campaign would get into the asking for donations and support to the campaign. So I think I kind of liken that a little bit to the way public relations works with marketing and advertising, where before you start going out and asking for someone to do business with you or to buy your product or whatever that might be, your service – it always should begin with the communications aspect, the PR aspect of what you stand for, uh, the quality of your product, uh, you know, your values, uh, your business ethics, and creating uh, a, a, a story, a communication that is inviting for consumers to say, I want to do business with you. I trust you. Uh, I feel good about this organization. Uh, does, does that kind of resonate with how you see that relationship working between PR and marketing? Exactly. Yep. That's precisely how it works. You want to, you want your, your PR, whenever possible, to precede your marketing and advertising initiatives for that very reason. Because who's going to buy from you unless they, of course, first know that you exist and that they like you, that they have a favorable you know, perception of you. Mm-hmm. Well, I say this with utmost respect now, but there can be officials at a credit union responsible for managing the balance sheet that only see value in spending money on a community engagement campaign that delivers an increase in auto loans, deposits, or mortgage loans. For them, these deliverables can be tracked and show a return on an investment. As for expenditures related to PR, that's a different story, it seems. Educational sessions directed to the community or donations to charities do not necessarily provide a tangible return for their associated costs. How, Jeff, would you explain the value associated with PR expenditures and their influence on the balance sheet? You know, the way I answer that question is that, yes, it's sometimes hard to tie your public relations efforts directly to sales. It oftentimes has an indirect uh, effect on your sales. 
But that being said, like I, like I just previously mentioned, people will not buy from you until they first know you exist. And the other point is that you want that favorable environment to, to be out there, and that will help your marketing and advertising efforts to be more effective. So, um, you know, think about this too, is that, is it important to have happy customers at a credit union? Well, of course it is because they will not pay customers, but they'll tell other people about it. So how happy are your customers? Well, why don't we do this? Let's survey them and find out. Let's set that baseline for what their satisfaction level is of your credit union. And then let's, let's do some, some peer initiatives. Let's, let's work on our customer relations skills, uh, you know, find ways that we can engage with them more, meet their needs better perhaps. And let's do a follow-up survey then and see if it's been an increase in customer satisfaction. And there you have something that you can tie, you know, results into for your, for your PR efforts. And, you know, I think you hit the the nail on the head right there when you talk about creating a a kind of a baseline, doing a survey prior to a campaign and measuring uh, where everything is and then doing the survey after the campaign to see if the needle moved at all. That, I believe, is is really the best, uh, how do we say, measurement tools or assets that, that we have at our disposal when we want to talk about uh, PR contributing to the balance sheet. Um, you know, and, and similar, I think, you know, we're now in the fall and we're starting to reap the harvest that, that we've sown, uh, you know, back in early spring. But in, in another analogous way, when you think about it, PR really is that whole beginning phase of fertilizing the ground, getting the soil ready and proper before you plant the seeds. You cannot reap, the, you know, the harvest unless you're working with a good foundation with that, that, that uh, you know, a good fertilized soil. And I, and I believe that, and I know it may sound a little crass, but I really believe that PR really is uh, the way that, that we influence the environment, the perception of the organization from which then we can move forward with sales and promotions and, and engagement. Yes, yes, definitely. It's not just selling products and services. It's selling beliefs, too. It's selling causes that you're behind. Jeff, let's say I'm a CEO at a credit union that has only maintained a marketing executive on staff uh, who is charged with promoting the latest auto loans, CDs, and other banking services, uh, along with managing the credit union's support and participation in community events. How would you persuade me to incorporate a PR function in my business model? How would that addition of an executive focused exclusively on PR influence my business. Okay, so marketing people are often not trained in the art of public relations. It's kind of like, you know, having a a dentist repair your car in a sense, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just not the same. And the best example I can share of that is I have a strategic alliance with a wonderful marketing firm in, uh, in Arizona where we moved from. And um, they'll often send me their press releases that they've written and they have me put them on the wire. Well, as I read these press releases, they read like a marketing piece. <laughs> oh, like, geez. So they, they've not been trained in how to write a press release. Mm-hmm. Press releases are factual. They are not a sales piece. Well, you sell just via your expertise in the press release. But, you know, when you're starting every single press release with with a such and such company is proud to announce, blah, 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 that is like the worst way to begin a press release. It's the most cliched, mm-hmm. most overused. And, the, I mean, if you look at a newspaper, do you ever see a newspaper story start with those words? No. <laughs> you know, so... So there's, when you have a communications person who's trained in the art of PR and communication, it makes a world of difference because they know how to talk the talk. They know how to work with reporters. They're more tuned into what each stakeholder needs. They're, they're trained in, in listening. 
in getting that mutually beneficial two-way communications established so that you can have more effective uh, uh, you know, relationships with all of your stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it used to drive me crazy as well, too. Uh, in all my work throughout the years in credit unions, in, in dealing with communications and PR, when so many times you hear, you know, so-and-so is pleased to announce, and I'm going, oh, my God, already. Of <laughs> course you're pleased to announce. You wouldn't be announcing it if you weren't pleased. So why does everyone feel like they have to use that cliche, you know, pleased to announce? Just yeah. announce, you know, well, this is what you're announcing. Right. You know, oh. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and a press release is an announcement. So you're saying it again. It's, mm-hmm. it's too repetitious. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. You know, Jeff, finally, I, I, I'm thinking that a lot of folks that are listening are really going to want to connect with you and reach out and, and get some guidance from you for their own PR initiatives uh, in enhancing their brand and promoting awareness of the values that are that they espouse uh, as a credit union. So how might a listener connect with you to ask a question or perhaps engage you for your services? Sure. I, I would love to connect with your listeners. Uh, first of all, I would recommend visiting AuthenticityPR.com. Right on the homepage, they can sign up for a weekly newsletter where we provide PR, marketing communications, and storytelling tips. Uh, and then second, they're welcome to email me anytime at engage at AuthenticityPR.com. Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you, really, uh, for for taking time today to help us gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for the role of public relations and the value that it can deliver for a credit union looking to engage consumers and grow its balance sheet. Really appreciate you being with us, Jeff. Thank you all for letting me share some PR insights with your listeners today. And thank you all for listening. Stay safe. If you've enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to follow One on One with Walt Blasco's wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to send comments to walt at lascoscommunications.com. And to learn more about how you might support the prevention of elder financial scams, visit lascoscommunications.com. <laughs>